So how do you get started with us? First of all, an information session uh, is always uh, uh, the best way to start. Um, we actually encourage you to attend one in person so that you can ask questions. Um, but if you live far away and you watch this whole information session and, and you understand it, um, that can do the job as well. Um, because we can disc we do discuss all these issues again at consultation. Uh, we, we go over all of this stuff in the book as well. So beyond that, uh, the information session, you come in and you see um, one of the surgical team. Uh, you always see a surgeon as well, but sometimes people start with a nurse. They want a little extra information that way or an intake. Um, quite often our consultations uh, are done in, in coordination with our physician's assistant as well. Um, everybody gets psychological testing. It doesn't mean uh, any, we don't mean to be insulting or call anybody uh, crazy. It, we just want to know where you are. People who actually have a mental illness um, have been proven to do better with weight loss surgery than people who don't have a, a diagnosis of a psychiatric disorder. Um, depression, um, bipolar disorder, uh, certainly people do very well. We just want to make sure that you're stable. If you're going through the midst of a crisis, then we want to make sure that we're out of crisis period and that things have been stable for a reasonable amount of time. Um, Certainly with uh, chaotic life, if, uh, if things are falling apart around you, this is not a, a good time and we want to uh, do everything we can to get you ready for surgery but then wait until your life is stable. Um, the same thing goes with chemical dependency. People who have been clean for a reasonable amount of time and that does depend on the individual and, and what uh, item they were using. Um, but if you've been stable, certainly uh, weight loss surgery can be very effective for you but we don't want to uh, go in uh, too soon after um, instability. Everybody um, visits with the dietitian first of all so that we can assess how you eat and, uh, and what your problem foods are and what your behaviors are and then secondly so you can get education about how to best use these tools. Um, the number of visits uh, often is mandated by insurance. Some insurance uh, uh, companies require several visits. We also require everybody to be off cigarettes uh, or all tobacco products for at least six weeks and that is really a lifelong requirement I will say uh, that we're much more concerned after gastric bypass because of that ulcer issue. So what can you expect from us? You are obviously this is a very large medical part of your life we cannot do this with partial information we have to know basically everything about your medical history uh, especially your surgical history and, uh, and have coordination with your primary care doctor. It doesn't mean your PCP uh, or primary provider has to be completely in agreement with surgery as a philosophy, but they do have to tell us things about you and your medical history and uh, how they feel you'll be in terms of being compliant with visits and things like that. You can expect with any uh, complex issue such as this, some occasional delays and some frustrations. I tell people uh, I have a hard time getting people on the phone in my own office and they have trouble getting a hold of me sometimes. It's not any intentional disrespect. It is just uh, a reflection of how complex the medical system is these days. And I do apologize uh, when things are tough that way, but uh, I don't expect you not to ever get frustrated, but please don't give up on us for those types of things. Now that being said, uh, letting ourselves off the hook a little bit for those things, we should never be let off the hook for respect and support from the surgical team or from anybody at the institution. Uh, there's never an excuse for any disrespect. There's never an excuse for any lack of support for us and we work very hard for sensitivity training uh, and to remind ourselves that we work for you uh, and, and to give you nothing but, but the, the best feeling of, of being behind you uh, and being your partner in this journey. Now, when you go home, when you go back to work, you can expect to need to educate people around you. Uh, there's so much bigotry and bias in society uh, that you will need to talk with your family and friends about this. When they say something insensitive or biased against surgery, first of all you have to remember that people are concerned about you and they don't want you doing things that they perceive as irresponsible or risky. And I think this is where you have uh, the obligation or at least the opportunity to educate them. Most of, most of people's uh, most of people's fears are based on, on ignorance. They don't understand these issues. And that's another reason we put this on the web is so that you can help use us to educate your friends and family or coworkers 
uh, if you feel they're supportive. If somebody's truly non-supportive and you don't want to have anything to do with them, that's your business. I understand that. But uh, quite often, if somebody means something to you, it's it's important. It's better to try to educate them and help them understand what your rationale is and, and what the risks really are. You can also expect in life future challenges and changes. This does not solve everything. Uh, people do still have stressors. Uh, people do still have uh, employment changes and, and uh, relationship changes. And this is going to be a part of your life and you will need to have it, uh, uh, you will need to adjust with it. And that's something that we're here for. Um, also future challenges and changes in your health. We are all going to die of something someday. We're all going to get some type of diseases down the road. Um, when you talk to health care providers, whether in an emergency room or, or, or with your primary docs, if you change down the line or move down the line, you need to let them know that this is a part of your health uh, and, and a part of your body and they will have to uh, um, be aware of that and make adjustments consistent with that. Okay, so risk benefits here are the alternatives. There's not a lot. Um, first of all, you've probably already tried diet and exercise or medications. You could try that again. If you've never tried them, we certainly encourage you to try. And most insurance companies uh, require it. Now we know that 99 out of 100 people are not going to have long-term success. But still, if you're that 1 in 100 person or 1 in 1,000 persons, that, uh, that's a great way to go. I have nothing against that at all. Uh, if you want to just give it one last try, we have a medical weight loss program and we're happy to help you with that. A lot of people do really feel like they want to give it one last try and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This is not a, this is not a rush deal. I tell people it took me 10 years to decide to have uh, LASIK surgery on my eyes and uh, I'm glad that I took the time. I, I didn't do anything differently in the end but that's, I waited until the time was right for me. I think you should feel the same for yourself. There are some unproven experimental procedures out there, and I don't use those words negatively, they just have not been proven to be effective, and they are still still uh, in the development stage. Um, they may never prove to be effective, or they may prove, uh, if they find things exactly right, that uh, or the, the perfect uh, recipe, that they may be the next great thing. Um, I will tell you that the pacemaker has been looked at fairly extensively so far, and long-term it just does not seem to be uh, working for most people. There were very early promising studies, uh, but again, in terms of the durability, in terms of lasting a long time, it did not seem to work at this point. Studies are still going on with that, um, but I'm less hopeful about it than I was even a, a year or two ago. There's a new uh, procedure called an intragastric balloon. Uh, that is a little balloon that just sits inside the stomach. It goes in non-surgically. Uh, it works very well for the short run. We definitely sure that it is not a long-term thing. We cannot leave that in place forever. Um, but it is good for the short run for a lot of people. It has its own complications as well. Probably coming to the United States in the next couple of years. Um, there are some uh, other advanced procedures that are being developed. They're very unproven at this point in terms of uh, truly non-surgical techniques that are just done through an endoscope. Um, the other alternatives that we don't perform here, the severe malabsorptive operation, that duodenal switch, or biliary pancreatic diversion, or scope and arrow procedure if you're reading on the internet, uh, those are available out there. I don't think they're irresponsible, but I do think uh, risk benefit wise for most people, once you understand the differences, most people are not going to choose that. We can give you the names of some people who do perform those or you can find them easily on the internet. Um, we don't do formal referrals for that. The vertical band of gastroplasty is still being done in some centers. I do recommend against that. It's just not as good a procedure uh, and we have techniques that are as low risk as the VBG um, with less of the risk of weight regain or breakdown of the tool. Uh, so it's, it's done out there. Uh, most centers who do it do other things as well and I just wouldn't recommend having that procedure. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention today. Um, at our regular information sessions we have questions Sometimes uh, we stick around for an hour answering questions, sometimes it's just a few minutes. Um, I always stress that individual issues, uh, sometimes when we have to look over your medical history or your exam, can really only be answered in the consultation room at, at, at the time of examination. Um, but uh, a lot of times we talk about insurance issues at this point, um, individual health issues, 
laparoscopy in particular, people want to know if they've had prior surgery or hernias, can they have laparoscopy? And the answer is usually yes. Um, we're, I'm quite liberal about at least having a look laparoscopically. We can um, divide adhesions and things like that with laparoscopy. Uh, it's certainly not, uh, not often that we have to go open, um, but uh, that's something we talk about individually. Medicare coverage in our program is likely, we hope, by the spring of 2007. Um, we're still undergoing that process, although we uh, are very close, we hope, to uh, uh, accepting Medicare. People who live greater than 60 miles away, Duluth has a large number of people who uh, are quite uh, geographically uh, distributed. The main reason I, I put this on, especially historically, was for people who have gastric bypass, if you end up out of the hospital a day or two after surgery, I ask that you stay in town close by for at least a few days. Um, I used to put a drain in everyone that was pulled out at a week and so I asked people to stay until the drain came out. You just need to be aware that uh, things are not completely healed for a good uh, three to four weeks after surgery and certainly that first week. I think it's just better if you live um, you know, more than an hour's drive away that you, that you stay closer in town. There are some good hotel rates uh, in town. Uh, this is true um, even for the band folks, if you want to stay in town for a few days, it's not a bad idea. Um, so just to be aware of that. Um, anyhow, that's uh, the basics. We can, uh, again, reinforce or elaborate on any of those uh, issues, and we do go back over all of these issues at your, um, your consultation with the surgeon. It's always a good idea to bring family with you or whoever your supporter is, um, because this is obviously a lot of information, and even going back over it, it uh, it becomes overwhelming very quickly. So I ask uh, if you have someone who you're comfortable bringing with you, to go ahead and bring them with you at the time of consultation as well. Thanks again.